Guess what's on the news more than politicians trying to demean each other? It's money laundering schemes. The thing is we know it's a huge deal, only because everyone else says it. What is so horrible about money laundering? Better yet, what is money laundering? Find out in the latest episode of Big Facts, Money Laundering Explained. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notifications button below. Whenever a politician is exposed for money laundering, a tried and true method has been used to rinse dirt off the treasure. But how does money get dirty in the first place? Especially since those very weird people in Canada have washable currency notes. An example of how money could get dirty is this. You get millions of dollars miraculously, but you don't want to pay taxes solely because you are a rich person. So rather than turning over these earnings to the IRS, you place them in an offshore account and then use the funds to buy Jeff Bezos' house. Once you own the property, you can use that to take out millions of dollars in loans, and since the money was in the form of loans rather than income, boom, no taxes. The old real estate bait-and-switch is a classic mode of cleaning up cash. So how common is this practice, since it seems fairly easy to do? The United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime reckons that somewhere between $800 billion and $2 trillion goes through the rinse cycle every year. That's in the neighborhood of 2-5% to 5 of the entire planet's GDP. The easiest way to explain money laundering is here, at its simplest. This is the act of making money that comes from source A look like it comes from source B. That's it. If you're a criminal, you can't exactly use money used through legal means because then the officials would seize it. So you have to make it seem like the money came from legal sources. Don't worry if you're a small-time shoplifter, there's no need to launder your money. The most common types of criminals who need to launder money are drug traffickers, embezzlers, corrupt politicians and public officials, mobsters, terrorists, and con artists. Drug traffickers are the ones in the serious need of money laundering because they deal almost exclusively in cash. Cash draws attention. Also, it's just super heavy. If you're a drug trafficker and you really need to clean up some money, here's how to do it. First, placement. At this stage, place your dirty money into a clean institution like a bank. This is the riskiest stage because cash draws attention and the bank is required to report high-value deposits. Then comes to layering. This involves sending money through various transactions to make it difficult to follow. Now for the fun part, integration. At this stage, the money reaches the mainstream economy in a legitimate looking form. You could transfer funds to invest in a business or purchase a $10 million painting that has nothing but one splash of paint on it. Oh yeah, art is used in money laundering big time. More on that later. That's it. You're officially a money launderer. In fact, Money laundering is a crucial step in success of terrorist activities and drug trafficking. But white-collar crimes cause the biggest dent. There are some variations in this scheme we have told you about. Actually, the ones we list are the ones that authorities know about. There are countless ones that have yet to be uncovered. Here are some popular ones. Number 1. Black Market Colombian Peso Exchange Already sounds interesting. Let us explain this one. There are people who do business in Colombia who need dollars to import international goods. But the Colombian government has taxes on money exchange from pesos to dollars and even tariffs on these imported goods. And as everyone knows, it's a sin to pay taxes if you're rich. These business people therefore can go to the black market peso brokers who charge a lower fee to conduct the transaction without the government being none the wiser. That's the illegal importing side of the scheme, actually. The money laundering side goes like this. A drug trafficker turns over dirty U.S. dollars to a peso broker in Colombia. The peso broker then uses the drug money to purchase goods in the U.S. for Colombian importers. When the importers receive these goods and sell them for pesos, they can pay the broker back in pesos. Or you can do smurfing. This method entails breaking up large amounts of money into smaller, less suspicious amounts. In the United States, the smaller amount has to be below $10,000. This is the amount at which U.S. banks have to report the transaction to the government. The money is then deposited into one or more bank accounts, either by multiple people or Smurfs, over an extended period of time. If you don't want to participate in that solely because you hate Smurfs, no problem. 
You could send money through various offshore accounts in countries that have bank secret laws, which means that for all intent and purposes, your money will be hidden until a reporter releases your name in some papers. But even if that doesn't appeal to you, create shell companies. These are fake companies that exist for the reason of laundering money. They take in dirty money as payment for supposed goods and services. But surprise, surprise, there are no goods and services. They simply create the appearance of legitimate transactions by making fake invoices and balancing sheets. It's the equivalent of opening up a random spreadsheet and staring at it until your boss looks away. But do you know the best way to launder money? Invest in legal, legitimate businesses. Launderers sometimes place dirty money in clean businesses to clean the money itself. They may use large businesses like brokerage firms and casinos that deal in so much money that it is hard to detect what small portion of it is exactly clean. Or they may use small cash only businesses like bars or car washes. These are good upfront companies, but the real purpose of this is to clean the money. This method works in two ways. The launderer can combine the dirty money with the company's squeaky clean revenues. In this case, the business reports higher than its usual earnings. Or the launderer can just hide the money in the company's account and hope that no one decides to check the bank statements with the company revenues, which most of the time, a lot of people are too lazy to do. Just so you don't think we're pulling facts out of the air, we're going to provide a case study of one Eddie Antar. In the 1980s, owner of Crazy Eddie's Electronics took out millions of dollars from the company to hide it from the IRS. So that was the original plan. But since they didn't get caught, Eddie and his co-conspirators decided to make better use of their money by sending it back as revenue. What this did was inflate the company's assets in preparation for IPO. IPO is basically the process of selling parts of your company to the general public, so the company's status moves from private to public, which means more benefits. Placement. Antar made a series of separate deposits to a bank offshore. On one trip, he made 12 deposits in a single day, at least $13 million in cash. Layering. Before literally any authority could decide to become efficient for once, he had the wire transfer to Panama. Yes, the infamous Panama and it leaks. The reason for this was because Panama and its banks cannot report anything to the government, which seemed like a good idea at the time, until it almost bankrupted every country in the world. Now for the integration. Integration. Antar slowly wired the money from those accounts to legitimate Crazy Eddie Electronics bank accounts where the money got mixed in with the actual clean revenue. All in all, the scheme was very successful. By the time Eddie got to selling parts of the company, it was worth $40 million more. Until he got caught, that is. Eddie had sold his stock and was preparing to spend the rest of his life blowing his nose on solely $100 bills. But authorities struck him with an eight-year prison sentence. As you might have taken from this story, money laundering in this case fooled people who bought a company worth way less than they were told. What are some of the harmful effects of money laundering? You know, the ones that make it such a huge deal? Well, as noted, it's estimated that the money launderers clean up to $2 trillion or the world's 5% money each year. So the global effect is staggering. If you look at the moral side of this, money laundering ensures that criminals and their activities are paid off, and they can spend that money without any repercussions. This encourages fraud and a plethora of other very uncool stuff. Of course, the economic effects are also criminal. Developing countries bear the brunt of this. This is because the governments are still in the process of establishing regulations. Of course, laundered money is untaxed, which messes up the government's greed. So they impose more taxes in the legitimate sector. You probably understand now that the need to whack money launderers is great. But how so? The majority of global investigators focus on two prime money laundering industries drug trafficking, and terrorist organizations. The effect of successfully cleaning up drug money is very clear. More crime, more drugs, and, well, more money. For drug dealers, not common folk. But before you trash the government for being lazy, as we have before, understand that tracing money is a very daunting task. There are trillions of dollars worth of wire transfers occurring every single day, which is dirty and which is clean. Who knows? Which is which? Within the U.S., there are two primary methods through which the government can detect and combat money laundering. Laws and law. As in, 
legislation, and enforcement. Yeah, it doesn't work all that well. Politics makes strange friends. Well, so does money laundering. In the not-so-recent years, the international organizations that are stopping money laundering have been focusing their attention on the strange influence of terrorism and the art market. On a close inspection, it truly does make sense. The art market is based on secrecy and involved the transfer of crazy large sums. By contrast, in the world of real estate, the sellers and buyers are subject to legal obligations on what is being sold and bought and even how this purchase is possible. There are zero such rules in the art world. Everybody calls artists quirky and let them sell a white canvas for $30 million. Artists are not starving at all. Which other industries is supporting money laundering? Comment down below and we'll pin the best one. Like this video and share it with everyone you know. Subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. This was Big Facts, bringing you the best content on YouTube. See you next time.